Hello and welcome to Craft D&D. Today I'm going to talk to you about a book of dark secrets. Scary. I want to talk about the dark secret that your party has. Wow, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. This book is simply fantastic. Baldur's Gate, that cesspool of decay and despair, has been affected by a great evil that contributed to the city's moral decay for decades. You have random murders from cultists, the populace is in panic, and the flaming fists are running roughshod over everything. Not even the party is pure, no. As a group, the party is bound together by a dark and foul deed. Their dark secret. Only it is not a secret. At least one other person in Baldur's Gate knows. And they use this power to manipulate, blackmail, and outright control the party to do their whims. It doesn't even matter if you are a devout, lawful, good paladin. You are still part of the dark secret, and in the eyes of the powers that be, are just as guilty as every other member of the party. If a devil learns about this dark secret, it could very well cost the party their souls. So what are the dark secrets? Pages 208 to 211 of the book outlines the possible secrets that the party could have. Of course, there is nothing to stop the DM, either alone or with the players, from creating a different secret that better fits the players and their characters. The secrets in the book include conspiracy in Baldur's Gate, murder in Baldur's Gate, theft in Baldur's Gate, failed coup in Baldur's Gate, if you wanted to make up your own, you could go along similar themes such as kidnapping or the worship of evil gods. After all, there are cultists randomly killing people openly in the streets. The conspiracy in Baldur's Gate secret says that the characters are all that's left of a group that strove to change Baldur's Gate and failed. Now, the city's leaders or other powerful figures seek to stamp out the last motes of their movement. Perhaps they were rebels, or movements of a union, or some clandestine organization. Regardless, their rivals didn't get where they are by being oblivious or merciful. The murder in Baldur's Gate secret says... There's blood on the characters' hands. They all had a part to play in a murder. Justified or not. Shared guilt, coercion, and fear keep the secret between them. The theft in Baldur's Gate secret says, The characters broke the law by stealing something valuable. The question is, did the characters perpetrate the theft because they needed, or wanted something, or because they didn't want someone else to have it? Finally, the failed coup in Baldur's Gate secret says, The character schemed with others to seize power, and failed, revealing their ambition and treachery. The dark deed can be something as small as attempting to gain control of Patriarch House to something on a much grander scale, such as trying to unseat a duke, seize control of a guild, or topple the flaming fist. Now, for me personally, I would lean towards that last one as I think that toppling the flaming fish should be a goal of every citizen in Baldur's Gate. As a player, I hate them for their corruption. As a DM, I love to use them to torment my players. After the group decides upon the secret that they all share, then they can either pick or roll dice to determine the details of their secrets. 
These include the details of the secret, the role that each of them played, and the eventual consequences. In my personal example, I would likely choose for my details that the Flaming Fist is corrupt, because they are. You turned against your commanding officer, seeking to take the fist in a new direction. Now you're branded a traitor. My role would likely be that of traitor. You'd been looking for a chance to lay your ally or superior low. You thought this was it. I really like that one and the consequences for it. One of your own ratted you out. Now you're all being hunted, but one of you is a traitor among traitors. So all you know is that all forced to work together, you can't trust anybody else. Now that sounds like a nice way to start an adventure. So who knows about the secret? Well, in the case above, I would suppose the Captain Zodge would, although that might not necessarily be the case. Perhaps a different NPC knows and is keeping the information from Zodge. This is that NPC leverage, and this is what forces you to do their bidding. And do their bidding they will. If they refuse Captain Zodge, for example, he has the power to have them executed on the spot, no questions asked. And with his six bodyguard veterans, there is little chance that a level one party will be able to do much except say, yes, sir. Or perhaps the dark secret that the group chose was murder in Baldur's Gate. And the consequence was that somehow the victim is still alive and knows what you did. Now you have to figure out how to put them down a second time. Now I think this is a very interesting mechanic because it gives the party a reason to be working together. They may not trust each other, they may not want to work together, but it's more than just you were hired by somebody at a tavern or you were all members of a party before this and now you're still members of the party and you're going to stay together forever because yay. No, this gives them a reason that they have to stay together. Not because they're friends, not because they grew up together, not because they came from the same village or the same training regiment or the same college. This is a group that is forced to be together against their will, that's not going to trust each other, and is going to have a lot of interesting role play opportunities. It's a very exciting and very interesting mechanic that I cannot wait to put into use, not only in Avernus, but in other games as well. It's a very interesting thing to me. I've never actually tried something like this. Usually the party just kind of gets together and they're together and they come up with a quick reason and we never really think about it again. Occasionally we'll bring in some of the party's backstory or the character's backstory, but this really plunges everything right in. The backstory is the most important thing to start out, which is a very interesting and very new way of doing things for all of these uh, published modules that we've seen so far. This is the first time we've seen something like this where the mechanic is just integral to the plot, where the character story is so important to the plot. So I think this is going to be a great mechanic going forward, and I can't wait to see what uh, some of the community additions or ideas behind this or around this will be as well. It'll be very exciting. And it'll be really interesting, too, to come up with one of these together as a backstory for the entire party, you know, with the player, Session Zero, come up with one of these on your own. You know, why is the party together? Did you try a kidnapping? Did you, were you witnesses to something? Are, is, it a, is it something that you did not actually do, but you're being accused of it and you have no proof, no evidence to clear yourself so that the real perpetrators are actually still out there and you may be wanting to try to bring them to justice, but in so doing, you yourself are the ones that are being viewed as the guilty party and all of your actions are suspect everything you do is used against you it's going to be a very interesting way of uh 
of playing this game moving forward. And I think this is going to be kind of a neat little mechanic. Like the old saying goes, two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. I hope you've enjoyed my look into the dark secrets in Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click that bell icon. Thank you very much.